Hey, everybody. We're here. Sorry, we're a few minutes late. It's Alice Howe. And I'm Freebo. How y'all doing? Hope you're well. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in again this week. We are so happy to be back with you and happy to be bringing in one of our absolute favorite guitarists, singers, and songwriters tonight. Do you want to tell them a little bit about Jack? Yeah, uh, I call Jack Williams an American treasure. Uh, I hope that doesn't embarrass you too much, Jack, but but you are. Uh, you're everything that uh, American music is about, you know, folk, jazz, blues, standards, uh, and rock and roll. And uh, I met Jack at the Kerrville Folk Festival in 2002, so we've known each other for about 18 years, and we spent a lot of time together. We'll talk about that, but uh, Jack is a beautiful songwriter, very unique, uh, and the way he blends the playing of his guitar the chords, the writing of the song, and the way he sings it, he's totally at one with all three of them. He's totally at one with his guitar, and he's got a very interesting story or stories to tell, so we're looking forward to doing that. Should we bring him in, Alex? Let's bring him in. Bring me in. Bring me in. There hey, you are. Jack. Hey, <laughs> Hi, guys. We did I'm, it. <laughs> how you doing? I'm doing just great. It's great to be here. It's great to see you, man. Thanks yeah, for joining man. us. It's really a treat for us to get to share you with the people that we've been uh, joining here every Wednesday night. So thanks for well, coming. Thanks. I'm just sorry I can't be there in the room for hugs. Yeah, me too. I mean, we I spent know. so many so so many late nights together and afternoons uh, playing music yeah. together. It's a really a shame we have to do it virtually like this, but better <laughs> than not at all, right? It is. You know, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. You want to start us off with a song? Yeah. We, you think? Could we, we trouble could you for a, a song? Bit. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, Freebo told me I'm you know, going to play three or four songs, and then he proceeded to tell me two of them that I was going to play. And so I'll play the first one song, and I almost uh, always play at a concert. Excellent. I wrote for my hero, Josh White. Josh White was a natural man Held a plug nickel in the palm of his hand He raised it up like a glass to his eye But he saw through the nickel made the natural man cry Lord, 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 this morning made a natural man cry Then through the nickel a vision arose he saw an actor in the jungle with a bone in his nose. He saw a maid in an apron with a Hollywood grin. He heard a singer at the back door slamming again. Lord, 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 heard the back door slamming again. High up on the mountain sat the Lord and the natural man. Oh, Josh White got the gift of song. He never saw the promised land, but he never saw the promised land. So Josh White laid the nickel down. He put his hands in his pockets, strolled into town. He looked to the left and over to the right. But he couldn't find a place to spend his money that night. Lord, 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 he sure want to spend some money tonight. Now he ran to the hotel, dollar in hand. But they wouldn't take a dollar from no colored man. He said, it's getting mighty late, mister, where can I go? He said, well, play me a tune, I'll let you sleep on the floor. Lord, 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 Josh White asleep on the floor. High upon the mountain sat the Lord and the natural man. Oh, Josh White got the gift of song, but he never saw the promised land. He never saw the promised land. Now 
Now way up yonder where the angels are found All the blood from his fingers stained by heavenly ground There ain't nothing to do but to do what you do And you do it till they roll a stone over you Lord, 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 don't let them roll a stone over you High up on a mountain sat the Lord and the natural man Oh, Joshua got the gift of song, but he never saw the promised land. High up on the mountain, I heard a cold black angel sing. And I better plug nickel if he came back tomorrow, it wouldn't change a goddamn thing. I bet it wouldn't change a goddamn thing. Oh, oh, oh. beautiful i i listened to uh josh white a lot with my mom growing up so that's that's really cool to hear that song hey jack uh we have some technical challenges on our end we've it has been brought to our attention that it is not on facebook which is um a travesty travesty and very confusing to me and is uh a, something that i would really like to fix so how do you feel about starting over? <laughs> what happened? We don't we don't know. I'm having a I'm having an issue on my end over here. Um, I mean, the people on YouTube just saw that and enjoyed it very much, and there are 44 of them watching, and we are so happy that they are there. Tim Moore from the um, time we first started playing. Wait, but perhaps it is working. Wait, I'm getting a message from the beyond that maybe it is working. Will you guys talk amongst yourselves for a moment? Okay, I'm happy to. <laughs> Jack, I know I, that I, I know that I just realized that when when I finished the song, yeah. my screen had gone completely blank, and I think that must be Judy's computer, and I could neither hear, her, and I thought maybe I was out in the universe all by myself somewhere. Well, sometimes, it, it was nice out there. You know, sometimes we are out in the universe all by ourselves. You know? <laughs> oh my God! Wait, they can see us. Oh. Oh, so we're having it. I just had a freaking heart attack. Really? Oh. Okay. And then I recovered from it. So then it worked. It yeah. worked. They heard that beautiful song. Thank God. Good. So okay. Don't have to play it again. No. no. I mean, I mean, I, you I could. could hear that song all night. <laughs> by the time I play it again, I might have, might forget it by then. No, you'd play it completely differently because you always <laughs> do. Hey, I, I want to ask you a couple. The, there are a lot of people on uh, Norm's guitar channel, on Norm's Red Guitar. There's a lot of guitar players, a lot of guitar geeks. Uh, and uh, We mean that lovingly. No, absolutely lovingly. But but your style, the the check dicky is that Chet Atkins essentially in your particular hybrid of that? I'm not a, not a big fan of Chet Atkins. Now where's that? Come well, he from? was he was too clean. He was too too <laughs> slick for me. I like I like raw, edgy stuff. That's why you know. I like to hear the strings pop and snap and whiz and uh -huh. and uh, Chet was a um, he was he was too precise for me. And I was never I was never influenced by a guitar player. Mm. So that where so where'd you pick up that style? Go the the, the thumb finger. How thing, did Jack finger, Williams <laughs> become yeah, Jack Williams? You, I can how, tell you exactly. Style evolve? 1970. <laughs> it was one day in 1970. Uh -huh. You have to understand, see, when I first started touring, as a solo in 1968, I was playing a nylon string, classic guitar, and I understood classic guitar playing. I had played classic guitar and lute in a Renaissance ensemble. Lute. <laughs> lute, a little bit. Yeah, it was a little uncomfortable to play, so I stuck wow. with the guitar. But, but I learned the technique, and I still love to play classical guitar music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, then one day in 1970, two years later, uh, we had Crosby, Stills, and Nash. Helplessly hoping the harlequin, you yeah. know. Yeah. I, yeah. I was listening to that song, and I listened to the way he played it. I never listened to guitar players. I always listened to ensembles, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. singers, orchestras, bands, bands. But I was not a guitar fan. I, um, I always thought getting this much talent on the guitar was just God's little joke or maybe something I did wrong. 
and it just, you know, instead of giving me the cello that I so wanted, he gave me the guitar. But on that day, I heard Stills doing, and I said, I can do that. I want to play that song. And that day, because I had classical guitar technique, I found out there was nothing to it. But I didn't realize that on that very day at that moment, I was establishing a style of playing that would characterize my entire career. Interesting. That's exactly that, what happened. Oh, wow. I mean, Stephen is a hell of an acoustic guitar player, too. I mean, the way he played that style, his blues playing, really, really phenomenal. I didn't know at that time that that was what they called Travis picking. Mm -hmm. And that was what Chad Atkins followed Merle Travis, but there were players before Merle before Travis. That. Yeah. I don't know my history, but I do know that in Piedmont Blues, I hear people say, hey, you're a Piedmont Blues player. And I say, well, I was born in Lancaster, South Carolina. That's kind of the near the Piedmont, maybe. But I never heard, P heard the term Piedmont Blues mm -hmm. until it was applied to me. And then I said, wow, I guess that's what I am. Yeah, <laughs> among other things. Uh, but you also, uh, was trumpet your first instrument? You were a, a trumpet player at, at one point, weren't you? I was for many years. I started yeah. that when I was nine. Uh huh. Was that your first instrument, or any oh, piano no. involved? Or? No, I I took before I took up the trumpet. I played the ukulele when I was four. My mother was playing it, and um, she handed it to me one day and said, "Here, why don't you see what you can do?" And I had been watching her so closely that I'd already figured out how to play. <laughs> Judy Craig, <laughs> uh, no, uh, uh, and my wife and a bobtail dog. Uh, it's also little brown joke. Oh, little brown, yeah. That was it. Judy, uh -huh. Judy prompted my aging. Uh -huh. But I was able to play it on the first day, and I played it for the next eleven years, during which time I took up the piano, took up the trumpet. And at the end of 11 years, I picked up a guitar and said, heck, man, this is nothing but a big old ukulele. Yep. And besides that, now I can do this. <laughs> and before, I, it sounded kind of insipid. No. Uh, Jack, I, I, I mean, my, my, I'm very similar. Actually, I started with piano lessons at five. But the second instrument, second instrument was ukulele. My dad taught me, I don't know, four or five chords on the uke and then tuba. Uh, in a high school band, yeah, in ninth grade. But between junior and senior high school, I went to a summer camp, met a counselor, the Philadelphia folky who played guitar, and all I had to do, like you're talking, was add the bottom two strings because I, I already knew the shapes of a D and a C and an A and an E. And you'd and, already uh, developed the muscle memory well, to play those I, things. I, exactly, but muscle. But but my head is a bass playing head. I mean, I sang bass in the choir. <laughs> Your mind's I in the tuba. gutter. I'm left <laughs> left handed. Yeah. So it, that's the exact same thing happened. And then later on, that led me to bass, which is just the bottom four strings of the guitar as opposed right. to the top four. So yeah, that's interesting. But you, you and I have talked where you, your trumpet playing. And the whole melody concept and the harmony parts really had a lot to do with, with the way you figured out your, uh, your playing. You do a lot of internal things with, uh, with harmonies and your three chord, your three note chords that you, we talked about a curve one time, which I found really fascinating. Because most guitar players go broom and do the whole strum. Mm. And you just really pick out the bass note, the melody note, and the harmony note. Is that true? Yes. And um, there are sometimes counter melodies. Mm. I just, I didn't take up guitar the way I saw my friends taking it up. Uh, they either, you know, just chorded to sing. You know, just chord, 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 sing. And um, I thought, you know, with this classical guitar technique, there were ways for me to introduce elements into accompaniment that most people were not doing. I remember working up Ruby Tuesday. You know, and yeah. other guitar players said, what are you doing, man? I said, well, I'm playing the song. And the idea to me was that you got an orchestra in your hands. Mm -hmm. And I love, most of all, top, my favorite music in the world. And my favorite composer is Brahms. Mm. I love very, very melodic. What, what they call classical 
music, which is a strange name to cover a thousand years of music because uh, it went so, <laughs> so many different true. phases, you know. But um, that and jazz, because I played a lot. I was a jazz improviser on the trumpet. I learned, I learned that from just scat singing and watching Louie and Ella mm -hmm. and some of the others and um, using the trumpet as a melody thing as well as when I became an arranger for big bands <laughs> making the guitar sound like a big band or like a or like an orchestra and I realized that there are things that can be done here that people just aren't doing. I realized at some point too that I was doing too much of that and my song was getting lost. Hmm. So at some point I reached that crossroad where I learned to meld this that with my song. That figurative crossroads again with the That's guitar. That's right. It, yes. it always shows up somewhere, <laughs> doesn't somewhere. it? Somewhere. Yes. And because um, I found out I was playing, I would, I would play a song and then I would play this long fabulous lead type thing with the bass and um it only occurred to me i think maybe watching a video of myself that i wrecked the song completely <laughs> i i interrupted the flow of what mm. i had started with my lyric right and i and so um i've cut down now and do a lot less and songs that i wrote years ago i've simplified them but i keep the essential <laughs> underlying bass harmony melody thing right but I, I just i just enjoy the guitar for that purpose i don't enjoy much listening to guitar music i'm not a big fan of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um not it, even classical guitar uh, some yes some i do enjoy <laughs> but not, i i no i could say i find it interesting what you say and i know alice can relate to this too is that when you're a singer songwriter the most important thing in general I mean, is the song you know for anything absolutely and the, and the guitar and we both do a lot of workshops and you know a lot of times when somebody sings a song and they're bashing the guitar <laughs> and you and you, you just you can't really hear them singing so and it's like it's really about the voice first mm -hmm. and the voice is delivering the song and the guitar is accompanying it so it's interesting because you're a hell of a guitar player and i, I know how you are you you just playing guitar all the time so you're thinking guitar but that realization of wait a second i'm stepping on my own song <laughs> yeah you know, it's, it's really really quite brilliant really and and very important mm. i remember i remember now i'm flashing back to when i had that revelation that crossroad there was a great songwriter probably georgia's finest ever uh, his name was larry john wilson and um he's on that um uh highways album what is that something highways it's a sort of a cult album um, What's that? Heartworn Highways, hmm. where you can see him and Towns Van Zandt and the young Guy Clark and the young Steve Earle. Um, Larry John Wilson was one of those guys, and he was down at a bar when I was playing, and I was playing a song, and when I finished, he said, man, you really can pick the guitar, but you sure did smother your own song. <laughs> And I said, well, thanks a whole lot. And he no, said, no, I'm, I, Hey, he no. was giving you a gift, right? It was, it was a gift. Yeah. And um, I acknowledged it by the end of the night. I had to, I had to bristle for a while first, you know? <laughs> yep. I had, to, I had to go outside and spit and stomp in the dirt. <laughs> We've but, all been there. <laughs> but then I realized, you're absolutely right. That, yeah. that was the moment. It was in the 90s when I learned that. Mm -hmm. hmm. I, I want to ask you one more question about guitar and then have you play another song. But in that Josh White song, you do, you know, damn, where you're, you're stretching two and three strings. Could you show that that's a really unique thing, very good guitar player? Could you do maybe the little segment for somebody who might have missed that in a song where you kind of do that? It's so cool. Well, I'll play, I'll play you a little bit of the instrumental song that I that I made up. It's a, it was an improvised song that I, where I discovered that I could do that. Okay. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough that. on the fingers, huh? It hurts the fingers because you're not, usually people bend this way. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm bending 
I'm bending these strings. <laughs> Ow. Love it. Beautiful. Jack, I'm thinking, are you thinking he should play another song? Yeah, now that now that we've gotten our, our technical side of things figured out, I, and we've got about 30 more people watching, I'd love to have you play another song, Jack. Okay. Um, well, I might as well play, um, play uh, Freebo's other request. <laughs> Well, whatever. I mean, if if, if it makes whatever sense. Whatever you want. But at some point during the show, I'd love it for you to play High Cotton, but okay. it doesn't have to be now. I said, oh, let's, all right, let's wait. I, mean, I got one. You said, I, I wrote a song down at the Edisto River you said you liked. Uh-huh. And I've rewritten some words to it, and you, I'll play it for you now. Great. I, was written, I co-wrote this with Jeff Bartley of Cambridge, Massachusetts. I just saw an email from Jeff Bartley who just had... Uh, he just had an operation of some sort. I forget what it was. Who, who runs the Monday night Cantab? Cantab oh, used month. to. Used yeah. to. Yeah. Cantab is no more. That's mm, right. They're yeah. looking to sell it. Yeah. Oh man. Maybe we well, can get a co-op together and buy it. Bring us to the Edisto River. That's where yeah. I want to go. All right. Here we go. It's always raining when the tire goes flat The dog comes in when you put out the cat We're all getting older, no way around that And if it ain't one thing, it's gonna be another Take a hold of my hand, let's run for cover We're all alike, all alike We all know the difference between wrong and right We all put the baby in the cradle at night we all need love, and that's all right. We're all alive. Some are named Pedro, and some are named Fritz. Some goes walking, and some just sits. Some eats hash browns, and some eats grits. There ain't a down bit of difference between left and right. If you got a stick of candy, everybody wants a bite. We're all alike. All Put the baby in the cradle at night And we all need love That's all right, we're all alive Black man, a white man, a Muslim and a Jew Walk into a bar and say, how do you do? Along comes a Baptist and a young Hindu so they have a couple drinks, they sing a couple songs The proof's in the pudding, we can all get along We're all alike, all alike We all know the difference between wrong and right We all put the baby in the cradle at night We all need love and that's all right We're all alike Now we all get cold when the fire goes out Confidence is shaken when you give in to doubt. So we do the hokey pokey, cause that's what it's all about. And we take a trip to Canada or Kathmandu, where they cry and they walk and they laugh like you. We're all alike, all alike. We all know the difference between wrong and right. We all put the baby in the cradle at night and we all need love. That's all right, we're all alike. children going to understand that it might be the fire or the frying pan but we can make it all better if we get together with an open heart and a willing hand we're all alike all alike we all know the difference between wrong and right we all put the baby in the cradle at night and we all need a love that's all right we're all alike I said we're all alike Turn my computer back on. That's brilliant. Wow.
I love it. Uh, such a beautiful message, too. And, but a great way of saying it. It is I a mean, great way of saying really it. Well, Jack is good. Jack is a he's master. Good at that. He's poetic. You're poetic in a way where you, I know you don't like being pedantic. Or obvious. Or obvious. Mm -hmm. Unlike Kevin. some people. Unlike some people. I, 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 can, I can go there sometime, but you know, sometimes you, I don't know. Anyway, that, that, that's brilliant, man. And uh, my friend Terry Moody is, uh, is watching, and uh, he says he's been to the Edisto. You know, I'm not uh, sure exactly the where the Edisto, but For folks who, who may not be familiar, it's, uh, Jack, I believe it's the oldest black water river in the United no, States? No. The longest? The longest. Couldn't remember if it was the oldest or the longest. Is that? Um, well, it's, um, un, it's, it's the um, longest non-polluted oh. Blackwater River in the world. Uh -huh. and, and, bla and the Blackwater refers to the amount of tannins. Tan tannic acid from yeah. the, from the uh, oh. cypress and the pines. Well, I and, was fortunate to get to join you guys down there one one year and it was just so so peaceful the most slow moving river you could imagine and you're just sitting in an inner tube and just floating along at one mile an hour mm -hmm. it's heavenly yeah, it's really a, i think you were there for the very last gathering i was yeah. oh i'm glad i could make it i'm glad you could too Definitely. Should I? Uh, you should do a song. I'm. Yeah. I'm not gonna. Not gonna pick like Jack, but. Well, it's not about. I'm gonna sing like to. Alice. He's not gonna <laughs> sing like you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Jack, I'm. I'm muting you. <laughs> That's a relief to know I'm not supposed to. gonna do this. They can see the guitar a little bit. I walked out in a storm the other night. I walked out into the river as it raged above its banks. I was sure the current would part around my waist But I reached out for your hand I admit I was afraid Strong swimmer though I know myself to be
you've been gone Put on the headphones. <laughs> can hear what's going Quick. On. Hi, Jack. That was that was beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> it truly was. Thanks. Have you heard that one? We've. I don't think so. We've had so many. Um, for for those of you who who don't know, Kerrville Folk Festival in Texas is a, a really special place. That's where I've gotten to know Jack the best, and um, I'm so glad that I was able to do the new folk competition last yeah. year that was last year it feels like a hundred years ago yeah. um, but it's this annual really wonderful songwriting competition um, folks of all ages submit and and it's an annual um, honor to be a finalist and there's 32 of them and I got to be one of them last year and I didn't win so I'm a proud member of Club, Club 7, seven. <laughs> aka the Proud Losers Club <laughs> and um it's it's a really amazing festival where uh, you know we get to just sit around late at night for many hours and share songs around campfires and and around lanterns and whatever other sources of light we can find. But I'm missing it. I miss that just being together. That feeling of of just sharing songs back and forth in the dark is is such a special time. It's I mean this is great to see you, but man, I just wish we could be together. Yeah, it's a special place. I mean, yeah. uh, I, 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 I've learned a lot there, too. You know, I think one, one of the wonderful things about it, you know, you and I, uh, Jack, we are not spring chickens that Alice is, but I know... What are you I, calling a chicken? <laughs> <laughs> I won't go there. <laughs> but, but you know, I... I, I was born I, in it, January. Oh, anyway. you were, yeah. Not spring. But it, every year, I know, I, I, I learned something. I mean, it's like the older I get, the more I learn and musically and the more I discover. And it, it's such a beautiful craft. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's amazing. And well, and I love seeing the other writers, too, and the way that they tackle an idea or um, maybe what I would have done differently or what they bring to the table that I never would have thought of. And, and I always leave every evening being like, Man, I never just so many so many different takes on it, and just not yeah. only on the guitar, but just the way you put words together, the way people think about themselves and other people and relationships. It's like it just it blows you away. It makes me just so eager to to run home and start thinking about what's next for me, writing wise. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Brevo, yeah, you I, you got a song? I do. I just wonder if our friends. Uh, Jim and Beverly are watching because we spent so much they time on, on their porch. They might be. You know, just sometimes in the afternoon, the evening, late at night, into the early morning. RV site number 29. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, man. The only one with a deck. Yes. That's, that's true. That's it's true. the best place to be. That's the one of the elite clubs. <laughs> What are you going to play, Freebo? Well, you know, I, we I, 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 I played this.
try not to repeat too much, but I, I know you and Judy really like this song, Jack. So I think I'm gonna gonna play it and any of those of you who might have heard it last week, I hope either you'll forgive me or you'll or you'll be grateful because you'll go, Oh, I really like that song. I just heard something that I hadn't heard before. That happens sometimes. Yes. Right? And before you start, may I mention a couple of yes. items of business? Absolutely. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We finally got the Facebook thing happening. It was not quite as we planned it, but I think we're there. And if you're enjoying the show, we would love if you would share it. Just hit the share button so that more folks can find it. Thank you to Norm's Rare Guitars, wearing the t-shirt, um, and to Jen at Norm's. And I got to thank Lori Reimer um, from, she's Rock Seller Magazine, Music Magique Promotions, um, our wonderful friend Lori in L.A., who's helping us behind the scenes too and shared it to a bunch of places all at once. So thank goodness for you guys. Just Appreciate wanted to give it. that little shout out, some love. Yeah, and as long as you mentioned that Rock Cellar Music, Rock Cellar Music, Whoops. What is that? Just a cell phone. Oh, okay. Nothing to worry about. Uh, Rock Cellar <laughs> Music, it's, a, it's an online magazine and they're helping to sponsor us and uh, it's really cool. Uh, they have articles about music and musicians, uh, but they also do you know, news of the day uh, if you subscribe to it and it's completely free, there are no catches whatsoever. You go to www.rockcellarmusic magazine rockcellarmagazine dot com dot com, <laughs> and uh, and just I don't know exactly what the subscribe button is, but it's pretty obvious, and it'll come right into your email uh, every day, and you can read it or not. But uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, and so, they're supporting us in this show, so we just want to make sure you know about the great work that they do. Indeed. Rock Seller Magazine. Yeah. Duck. Yeah. Rebo. Yeah. We got it. Okay, take my headphones off. <laughs> this song is called I Ain't Running No More. fears that I've run from for years but I ain't running no more I ain't walking out the door I ain't running I ain't running no more I ain't running no more like so many times before I ain't running I ain't running no more I ain't running no more I ain't running no more like so many times before. I ain't running, I ain't running no more. I ain't running, I ain't running no more. No more. No more. 
<laughs> we need a better system, Freebo. I know. How can we avoid Hi, this headphone thing? If anybody is really good at technology and can explain to us how we can hear Jack and not use headphones, please write nice me an person. email. <laughs> it's alice at alicehow.com. It's called telepathy. <laughs> telepathy. Can yeah. you just beam it into our minds? Yes. No, I just, just I wish, we, wish they could work it out with um, Zoom or Restream or whatever that... Because I was singing a great harmony with you guys, which oh, you couldn't I know. hear. I know. Hey, I'm I just sure want to say that, that Jim and Bev are watching. They are. Just All right. Yeah, and right. Uh, we got Melissa on here. We've got Terry. Oh, it's so good to see all of you. Toby, hey. And to all our friends at, at Norman's Rare Guitars, thanks for being here, everybody. Yeah, Toby, thanks for sharing earlier. Really appreciate that. And uh, uh, You know, you all should know. I mean, I hate to do this, this pandering, but... Uh, uh oh, believe, he's going to pander. Well, got to say it, but this, Here it comes. This, this is how we make a living. Uh, we play music. What? Who would be so crazy as to do that? We are. <laughs> <laughs> Jack and I have been doing it for over 50 years uh, and somehow survived. <laughs> and, uh, and, and look, we're really fortunate. I don't know we about are. you, Jack. I count my blessings every day that I get to do what I really love, what I'm here to do, and somehow make enough money to pay the rent and that's what this spiel is about because <laughs> we got to pay the rent folks and we can't go out and do the gigs and we appreciate y'all watching we yeah. really do and we hope you like it and if you do like it throw in five bucks i mean if each of you throws in five bucks and we split it three ways you know it really help us help us down helps the road us a lot. if you feel like putting in more great but we just know. five bucks would be so appreciated and mm. and um, I'm, I'm i'm sure you can do that if you can't and that's don't, okay, too. Don't go away. We want don't you to stay away. if you can't, no. because times are definitely uh, unusual for all of us, and we are well aware of that. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, we're grateful for your support. So yeah, all you. the info is right there. And yep. thank you. And, and now... That's so hard to do, isn't it, Jack? Oh, it's the worst. What's hard? <laughs> <laughs> Asking people for money. <laughs> that, part, that, that part, yes, yes. That part, this yeah. part no, is No, the fun. music is <laughs> hell. I mean, if... if I'm you know, always... <laughs> I mean, I've been doing it for 62 years for 62. money. but oh and, my God. and actually, I'm curious to ask you, Jack, you, you kind of state um, proudly on your website, and I've heard you talk about this, and I know from your touring and, and everything that you do is really kind of under the radar in some ways, like with you and Judy, um, the two of you going around the country together and doing house concerts and doing, you know, kind of not big time music biz type gigs. And I just would love for you to share a little bit about like kind of how you went down that path and what that means to you, why it's important to you, what it's meant for your career. Just kind of curious and, about and, that. And I, I would dovetail to that because where you came from, because like me, you played as a guitar player for a lot of people before you were a singer-songwriter. and That whole transition and how you've created a, really a wonderful career for yourself. Well, it's, um, I have never wanted... Uh, I always saw the idea of fame and fortune as a and not as a goal. If, if I were to attain that goal, I knew inherently that I would have to give up something. Hmm. And I would have to give up something that was important to me about how music is produced. Um, when I was 17 at the Miami or Fort Lauderdale Armory, my, my band, such as it was at that time, <laughs> uh, I, had, I had the quintessential rock and roll experience, I was accosted by a man in a suit with a cigar. <laughs> Can I manage you? He wanted to just not only manage me, he said, we want you to leave, this, leave these guys behind. We'll, we come with us and we're going to buy you, we're going to buy you some clothes. You're going you're gonna to do a, you're going to do a Dwayne Eddy thing. Uh -huh. oh. But it's not going to be Dwayne Eddy. You'll, you'll play, you'll be the lead guy and we're going to, we'll pay for your instruments. We'll buy your clothes. Instead of red and black like Dwayne and Eddie, yours is going to be blue, okay? Just like this shirt. <laughs> and and he had you look a check. Good in blue. That's good. He had a check for me. And I remember how much he said it was for. I did not see the check, but um, I told him I wasn't interested. I was 17 years old. Wow. And I just said, you know, it just doesn't sound like. There were other factors, of course. I was in school. I was. I was a kid. I was not a rebellious kid against my parents. I wasn't about to leave home, but I didn't even broach the subject with them. Mm -hmm. But early on, Freebo and Alice, I um, 
the idea of, of uh, playing those gigs that you feel like you have to play to make it, I did a lot of those. But at a certain point, I quit doing it because house concerts, the up close and personal thing, I was playing 70, 75 house concerts a year. Hmm. And I would go play the Ark. I'd go play the Freight and Salvage and the other some of the other big rooms. And they were never, ever satisfying gigs to me. Hmm. Um, the people that I dealt with, and I'm not being specific about anybody here, but a lot of times the people who run the commercial venues have seen it all. They're jaded. Right. They've yeah. seen it all. We, You're a newcomer. You're just trash, right. basically. You know, yeah, I'll give you a spot. Mm -hmm. I'll give you, you can play Tuesday night, you know, and we'll bring in 1200 bucks. I'll give you 300 yeah. And um, that actually did happen. Or 50 mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Dollars. Yes. <laughs> but uh, but I, I, did the, I did these gigs thinking that I would up the ante for myself and um, become better known. And I found that I was doing a perfectly good job of it and getting better known and, and getting to meet the people and enjoying the people who run a house concert are nothing like the guy who runs the so-and-so club in downtown Boston. Well, come on in, you know, go in, you go in there, blah, blah. blah and we're going we're gonna to do this, and you're going to do that. And it, there, is no, there is no warmth there. I'm looking for warmth in this world. Mm. Um, and you can find them in house concerts. You can, and there, there are venues. There are certain venues that have it. And uh, I could name them. I'm not going to do it because I don't want to leave anybody out or make anybody feel neglected. But um, right. there are places where you go where you feel like it is true that they, maybe it's a venue that has music seven nights a week. Mm -hmm. So everybody that works there, who books the acts there, they see music every night. You're just another one. But there are a few of them that manage to keep up the warmth, and you feel good about being there, and you feel good about playing for them. Yeah. And um, I just, uh, I didn't, I didn't, um, I played with bands from 1958 to 1968. As, a, and as an electric guitar player, basically? As an electric guitar player only. Uh -huh. And some piano and trumpet, depending on the size. They had one 12-piece band in 1963, and I played, mm -hmm. had a guitar around my neck, and I played trumpet, too. Oh, my but, uh, God. You guys would have been a dynamic duo, bass and oh, yeah, we, we, and guitar and trumpet. I can just see it. Well, and then, but in 1968, <laughs> I developed a concurrent solo career. I decided, and I worked up, I worked up a song that Alice played so beautifully. And I was, um, well, wait, I'm, let me guess, let me guess. Okay. Is it, is it Bring It On Home? No. No, I already knew that one from my bands before. Oh, okay. Wait, wait. Ain't no use to oh, sit okay. and wonder <laughs> why, babe. And I learned that. <laughs> several band songs. I had not yet written a song. That was oh. coming two, two years later. I wish we could but sing But I worked, think, remember the Ruby Tuesday thing I did? And, mm -hmm. and I, I was playing Jesse Winchester, I was playing Willis Allen Ramsey. Mm. I was playing what I wanted to play. Um, I found that that kept me from certain gigs. Uh, I did learn to find the songs that not only pleased me, but pleased them. Like, now that I've lost everything to you, you say you want to start yeah, something new. Yeah. yeah, and there was some beautiful stuff there, oh, some yeah. Paul Simon stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked them out, you know. I love Procol Harum, you know. Oh, yeah. All hands on deck. Beautiful. We'll run a flow. And these were this was my this was my um repertoire. Mm -hmm. And as I played solo, I kept having, I couldn't play solo all the time to make a living. So I had bands, trios, quartets, quintets, sextets, septets. What's 12? I had the 12 piece band De in 1963. Deca? <laughs> yeah, a decatet. A decatet? <laughs> it's a double sextet. <laughs> we're a decadent decatet. We were. <laughs> but eventually, I ended up in, 19, in the 68. So I put a band together that was a really hot band, eight piece, Athens, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And then um, when I left college, 1970, I was graduated from graduate school in 1970, and I put a band together shortly thereafter 
starting around 19. Um, all this time I was playing Colorado from the East Coast to Colorado. Rarely went to California. Rarely ever went out there. Did you ever play Tulagi's? No, I didn't. I always wanted to, but they they wouldn't give me the time of day. And you know what? I made I made a pact with myself. If a place is that hard to play, it ain't worth asking anymore. Mm. Mm-hmm. And there are places that just made it too hard to for them to say, well, I tell you what, I'm not begging you for a gig here. I just want you to hear me and see if I would please you and your audience. Mm. And and usually that just didn't cut any ice with them. They wanted you to Right. They wanted you to hear the hype. They wanted to hear well, all. I just love, you know, what it says to me is, is it's about valuing yourself and, and knowing what you're worth and knowing what makes you feel good and what doesn't. I mean, it's like I, I, when you said, you know, the venues that stick out in your mind as being the ones that do have the warmth. I mean, I've only been on the road for four years at this point, and um, I know those places come to mind right away. Right like, away. Immediately, I was like right there at a couple of them. <laughs> and, um, these, you know, these are the people you raise a glass to when you're talking about the gigs you play. Yeah, yeah. When you're talking about the horror gigs, the gigs from hell. <laughs> and, and all musicians sit around and talk about the gigs from hell, you know. Right. And, <laughs> and they're you sleeping. To, and you have to do them all. I mean, it's right. part, part of paying the dues. I mean, Absolutely. And that's how you find out what the good gigs are, by finding out what the bad yeah. gig. You don't go seek them out. You do what you got to do, and yeah. then you just start to make choices. But right? I admire you for making those choices and, and just and going that route. I mean, the house concerts are so wonderful. I didn't even know what they were until, you know, till I got into the folk circuit, as it were. Right. And just... The first one I, I became aware of was Bill Lippy's uh, series in Seattle. Seattle. And um, yeah, I just, you know, it was, it was like, oh my God, there's 60 people <clears throat> in this room and they're right here. And they each paid $20 and they're all so happy. And it's like, and they oh didn't God. know who you were and they didn't yeah. care. And they didn't care because they trust Bill because he That's has right. good taste. And yeah. so exactly. it's perfect for everybody. And I walked away with $1,000 and it was like, great. It's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, what you're talking about, and both you guys, and, and I can tell you, it, it's integrity. Mm-hmm. It means musical integrity, but it's also personal integrity. And, and there are a lot of ways to go, and there, there are a lot of, uh, uh, you know, there are a lot of distractions along the way. I mean, I, I feel really lucky. In 1968, I was playing with a band called Edison Electric. We're actually opening for Procol Harum, which is where I met Bonnie Raitt, you know, when she first saw me play, and I guess liked what I did, and we became friends and played with her later on. I thought it was your orange pants. It Maybe it was the orange pants. I don't know. <laughs> you told me it was the orange pants. <laughs> I had, I had yellow paisley bell-bottoms myself. <laughs> I, my, oh, man. These, these were orange bell-bottoms, yeah. But 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 anyway, I remember, because I, uh, I was a straight kid from Pennsylvania. I know you're from South Carolina, but... Uh, you know, I, I wanted to I wanted to make a living. I wanted to make some money, and so I wanted to get, you know, and get a gig or two at a at, in a bar band where you're playing four or five sets a night, playing six nights a week, but you're making some money. Of course, they want you to wear a uniform of some sort. You know, you, yours was blue. You know, I don't remember what color it was for us. And the other guys in the band, thank God, they said no. You can't do that because if you do that, you become a bar musician. <laughs> you, we will be a bar band, and we wanted to do original stuff, which we did. And I fought it tooth and nail, and damn it, they were right. They were absolutely right. And it's a huge lesson for me, and I feel fortunate all the way along. I've let the music be my guide, the music that I like. And, and I, think I've, I've, I think consequently I may not have had a rich life, but I've had a very happy life and very fulfilled life. Rich in experiences. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, as opposed to money. But, <laughs> you know, there are a lot of well, people I don't a lot wanna, of money who aren't happy. I don't want to cast dispersions on the people, even no. some of my friends, who have chosen no, money. And uh, they've chosen money over music. It, yeah. It's they, not to cast dispersions on anybody. And, no, and I l- honestly am grateful to every single venue I've ever played. And, and these are wonderful, hardworking people. And, yeah. and they do, uh, you know, so much for the communities that they're in. And, and people love them and, and patronize them. And, you know, I mean, I have great I was I was thinking but, more in terms of the musicians yeah. who some people may look at as not having integrity. Right. But the fact is that those people make their own choice. Right. Yeah. They go to Nashville, and to them, they make the decision, is the music, as I know it and love it, as important as how famous I want to be or how much money I want to make? 
if they make that choice, that's that's their business. I, I have to say that I have many friends who went that route. Mm-hmm. One, two, one band went to L.A., the other went, and they were incredible musicians. And they broke up. The bands broke up because they weren't going to make it. And they just, and they gave it up. Mm-hmm. And I, I was astounded. I said, mm-hmm. why, why have you quit playing? Oh, well, we just didn't get where we wanted to be. So then they ju- they're mm-hmm. just speaking their priorities, which are not mine. And I, I don't fault them for their priorities. They seem to be quite happy. Yeah. No, I've, I've got some very good friends who actually made that decision and quit playing music and, and got married and had a family and got a straight job and are sure. perfectly happy. I mean, certainly as happy as me, maybe, maybe more so, and had the family, the kids, had that life. But it always seems to come back, they say, but there's always a part of them that kind of wishes they were doing this, which makes me feel good. I go... <laughs> oh, okay, there's some retribution here. You oh my know, God! It's not you guys, I'm. Money, well, I always, I always ran up against. I always wanted to be married, so I got married and, and I played, and I got married and again, and I played. And I got married again, I got married again, <laughs> and then I got married again. And, um, oh my and, God! And and, and so it, it, it's it's a tough thing, but I will say this: that one time, I, there was something I wanted to do that I turned down because of family. In, 19, in 1965, I did a lot of backing of musicians. I backed John Lee Hooker, Big Joe Turner, the Platters and the Drifters and, and the Shirelles, you know. Soldier boy, oh, my little soldier boy. Um, but I had a gig in Athens, Georgia, 1965 with my band, and we were going to back, we were the opener, we were going to back Hank Ballard and the Midnighters. Turns out it was only Hank Ballard. Mm-hmm. And... And the other one was Jerry Butler, oh, who wow. I love Jerry Butler. You know, yeah. he don't love you like, you know. And so Jerry Butler comes into the gig in a sweat, and he corners me in the back. He said, you're the band leader, right? And I said, yeah, man. He said, can you read charts? And I said, yeah, man, but I don't need your charts. I know all your stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> and he looked at me, he wiped his forehead, he said, Phew. Well, my guitar player and bass player quit me last night at Cincinnati. And can your bass player read charts? And I said, yeah, he can. <laughs> and we know most of your stuff, even your obscure stuff. <laughs> and, and so we played the gig with him. He had a percussionist, two sax players, and a drummer. The percussion <laughs> congas and whatnot. And it was a beautiful gig. And I played guitar. And at the end of the gig, he offered me the job of his band leader. And he said, I want you, if, you, if you're willing to take it, I want you to go to Charlotte next week and take my songs, which I'll give you. I still got the charts upstairs he gave me. Yeah. And go to, to the, at Charlotte, North Carolina, Symphony Orchestra. I'm going to play with them, and you rehearse them. You rehearse them, okay? It was so up my alley. And I love Jerry Butler, mm-hmm. but my son was about to be born. Huh. I was married. I was going to school. But nothing overpowered the fact that I felt like I'm going to be somebody else's person if I do this. Mm. I've, got, I've got songs. I've got things to say. I had not written a song yet, mm. but I've got things I want to do. And this sounds very exciting, but I had mm. something else. I knew I, I, knew I had another destiny mm. and um, had no clue what it was. Mm. But I turned him down and I looked back. And so that was one occasion where family played an important role in me turning down something that I would have loved to have said yes to. But I look back and I think if I had done that, I wouldn't be playing these house concerts or these great gigs. I wouldn't know these great people. Well, you know, Jack, it's, but that's also part of integrity. I mean, it's the choices. It's, I'm, I'm not discounting the fact that, you know, you had the kid and family and everything, but... They, like there's also that thing like yeah but here's what I really want to do here's what I really want to express and right. and and that's so important and Alice and I talk about that all the time yeah you know? well no and I feel you know obviously I'm in a different life stage than you two um, and I feel like I don't know where my career is going to go but I think if I follow what I want to say and follow and who heart. I feel that I am got musically then whatever's going to happen is what will happen. I think if you if you have this idea of fame, you know, whether I mean it's I think having goals and having aspirations and dreams is one thing, but to to be like so focused on I have to be a certain way in order to get 
exactly. this thing, then you can't. That and that's that's going that's outside taken in. me yeah. quite a while and many conversations with you to kind of get to a place where the it's acceptance and just like living in the flow of it and just doing what you know is right for you. So, and I didn't want to just be right Jerry Butler's guitar right. player band leader. Um, that was not in the cards for me. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it didn't occur to me at the time that I wouldn't stay Jerry Butler's band leader, guitar player, that I'd be backing other people. But mostly, and I didn't see it as a pathway for me to be able to do what I felt deepest. And what is it that you feel the deepest? You should play something as a segue. Okay. Is that a good segue? That's a real good segue, <laughs> and, and I would love it if you'd play my request because... It's a good uh, example. I think it is a good example because here it is, you, if I may, and, and the listeners can, can make their own judgment, but mm. this song to me is, is it's so you, Jack. It's, it's, uh, I've never heard a song like it, uh, you know, musically, uh, what you do with your voice, with your guitar, but the song, it, it, it to me, it, it, it's one of the great in, environmental songs, you know, uh, th that I know of written. And it says it in such a such a subtle way, mm -hmm. and uh, so I think it's a great example of of how you marry a poetry music uh, with a message without knocking people over the head with it. <laughs> well, I never want to knock people over the head with my music, <laughs> other than sure. musically. Yeah. But this song um, has a complete. Well, every 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 note is worked out. There's a very li there's a little improv. There's room for wiggle, and uh, but mostly it's very carefully worked out to where my guitar answers me, talks to me, and I talk to it. Hmm. And uh, it's a song about the deep south. And I, I was a little nervous when you requested it for you because this is one where you can tell by my voice the hoarseness. I'm dealing with hoarseness issues. They're getting better and arthritis issues, and both of those come into play in this song, so this song is a dickens to play for me. <laughs> Most pickers would think it'd be a fast song, but this one is a, a very slow one, hmm. and is uh, rather difficult, but I'm glad to play it for you, because I love to play this song. Thank you, Jack. Appreciate it. Cotton stands open to the morning Morning breaks loose from the night Night runs grieving down the basin The river takes a shine to the light Light lifts the heat from the pasture I love the warm feeling in my nose Dusty red bull swats a deer fly as he nibbles on the Cherokee rose Cotton, high cotton more I see, the less I know The well runs deeper than the bucket goes Swing high, swing low, high cotton Says howdy to the melon Melon throws a shadow on the toad Toad spies a purple snake doctor And a sunbeam laying across the road The road used to lead through the cotton Before they turned the field into a mall Mall ran our store out of business and took a little family from us all Cotton, high cotton The more I see, the less I know The well runs deeper than the bucket goes Swing high, swing low, high cotton
gives shelter to the weevil. Weevil gives breakfast to the shrike. Shrike must kill, but does no evil. Ask the sparrow on the thorny spike. Cotton saw the land turn to madness. A million souls buried in the clay. Freedom walks her fields in a sad dress. In my Dixie home far, far away. Cotton, high cotton. The more I see, the less I know. The well runs deeper than the bucket goes. Swing high, swing low, high cotton. Cotton, high cotton. The more I see, the less I know. The well runs deeper than the bucket goes. Swing high, swing low. Where's a poor boy to go? Easy come, easy go. High cotton. Wow. Wow. There you go. Mm. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. So gorgeous. My, my buddy Terry Moody said very emotional song. He was tearing up. Doing oh, really? that. Doesn't surprise me. He's that kind of guy. Yeah. Beautiful. Lyrics, I mean just the tune, I also it kills me how you go. Then the bucket goes like that. Just <laughs> and one point, go, one How'd point you come you up, up with that? <laughs> I, do, I don't. I, you just come up with it. You just do it. You just, I know. It's... Well, you do a lot of that stuff with your voice. You, you do a lot of sliding. Good. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because in, in, the, in the 50s and 60s, I, I really wanted to be Ray Charles. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Also, the the uh, da 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 da. I mean. It, it seems so easy to play, but that is not easy to play, especially. It's, it's especially with arthritis and with a capo up there. Just, you still taking your turmeric? Oh yes, I, I wouldn't be able to play the song at all. That's yeah, so you cool. turned me on to turmeric, and I've, I've <laughs> kind of run out of it in the last two weeks. I got to stop at CVS and get some more, but it really does help. <laughs> and, uh, I've doubled it up. I do that in the morning, and now I take a thousand milligrams of curcumin every mm. night. Oh. And it, uh, you know what? I go oh. weeks without feeling any huh. lack of flexibility. Cool. It's amazing. Hmm. It's amazing. Very natural. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think I'll play, a, I'll play a newer song. Um, this, is, this is one that um, I just wrote, gosh, maybe a month ago. What can you do this in? Didn't know I needed you this bad 
wasn't fully aware of the thirst I had. But now that I know, baby, I can't go back. I'll never be the same. You can. I could count all the days left before the goodbye, and nobody knows it better than I. But I don't wanna live that way. You can. Thanks, everybody. Here he is. Hey, Jack. Beautiful. Thanks. Really beautiful. Thank you. It's been um, it's been a good time to write for me. Have you have you been writing on this these strange times? No. No. I've been I've been building. I write a little bit. I have I have one new, totally crazy song I'm working on. Crazy. It is. It's it. it yeah, it's a crazy song. Wow, can't wait to hear that next year. I'm, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put on the new CD. Uh, oh, great! It's funny that I see I was gonna begin work on this new CD back during when the pandemic was started. I was, and so it's ended up putting it off months, and it's been great because now this CD is gonna be like 50 songs long, because <laughs> I keep finding new things I want to do. Oh my god! And I get to play the songs over and over more than I would have before the session. And I know them better, so I'm really looking forward to this album. And then I wrote this one crazy song, and yeah, it's gonna go there. <laughs> Don't ask me to play it. Would you play it? Up, here's the here's the introduction. <laughs> That's the introduction. That's pretty crazy. Ask me no more. That is crazy. <laughs> The song is all all about, you know, all the voices in our brains telling us uh, things, you know, the racket that we deal with. Relate to that. Uh, just just the mental complication. It starts out in the brain, the brain's a terrible thing, a massive confusion and a whole lot of pain. <laughs> and it's all, the whole song is nothing but stream of consciousness. Oh, God. And, uh, <laughs> Just, yes, uh, I wrote exactly a song. What should, exactly <laughs> what it should be. Uh, I want to ask you one question. You, you said, I didn't realize it before you said that in 1970 you graduated from graduate school? Yes. In what? Music composition. Mm -hmm. I was a composer. Uh -huh. Well, that makes sense. I thought maybe it was something like archaeology or something. I, sure. <laughs> I would have liked that too. But uh, no, I, I studied a music composition. And um, I was in college for nine years, free bow. It's what, you know, the whole idea of being a musician, so you end up being married five times. And so in, in college, you're a musician, so you stay for nine years, you know, so you can get, get through. Wow, you really got extra of everything. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> the bad and the good. Hey, I, I can relate to that, not, not to the married bit, but 
uh, I was in basically <laughs> I was in five schools in seven years, <laughs> and and finally graduated with a degree in music composition. Oh, All right, composition and arranging, yeah. Yeah, but me, so. being a military kid, I went to seventeen schools in twelve years. Oh boy! Oh my goodness! Yeah, that'll, wow. That that'll get you learn learn you how to adjust. Well, it it, it it'll learn you how to yeah, but there's a real downside. If you're a military kid, and you know you're not going, you go to a town and your dad says you're going to be here for six weeks, Jack. Go out and make friends. <laughs> okay, so you learn to do that. You learn to be adaptable, right. but you don't learn to connect. Ah. You're not responsible to people. You're not answerable to them. You can be anybody you want to be. You can be right. gone in six weeks. What the hell? Right. Wow. So it took years to undo huh. that kind of jackassedness. You become you never a jerk. struck me as a, as a jackassed person. Well, I hope, I hope by the time I met you that I had gotten over it because I became aware. It was Judy's aware. influence. That partly... Partly, <laughs> it was um yeah. I'm not gonna go on any further. I might insult some uh, <laughs> army brats out there. Or something. Oh my goodness, that's interesting though. Hmm. Freebo, what do you what do you got for us? We got we are getting close to our time. I'm just surprised to say, but not that we really have to stop. But. Well, I was gonna. I think what I'm gonna do, Jack. Uh, we were, you know, talking about about the, the intuition and uh, and making choices, you know. And you know, I, I really think that's what life is all about. And life is really just a series of choices, you know. I mean, I, I look at where I am, and I look at every choice along the way that led me there, good ones and bad ones, and uh, they all got me here. Other choices would have got me somewhere else. Right. You know, it's very simple. And I mean, little choices and big choices. I mean, big choices like, like the one like, should I go on the road or should I stay home with the kids? And little choices, should I get out of bed or should I stay in bed? Should I go back to bed? <laughs> you know, should I have breakfast? Should I not? I mean, little ones all the way along. You know, big uh, deal. What is a big breakfast deal? Breakfast is it, a it big really deal. Is. But uh, do you want to play a little bit of bass? Oh, sure. Yeah, I think maybe right. I'll do a. Okay, here we go. My, my, my personal GPS. Cause, uh, oh, yes. Because that's what it, that's really I... what it's all about. You know, I mean, I, I figured out one day that, you know, I mean, women's intuition is a very powerful thing, and, and we all have male and female in us. And uh, the older I get, the more I'm learning how to uh, be in touch, stay in touch with my, my feminine side. And that is my intuition. That's good, Freebo. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Happy to hear that. Oh uh, yeah, and uh, so, hey, can you can you fit it in there? I think so. Oh, good. So I, I thought maybe I would. Uh, I, I think I played this one last week too, but I just feel like playing it. So. My personal GPS. And you played along on this, Jack. You can play along on it, even though we won't hear you. But uh, it goes like this. <laughs> Day companion living deep inside of me. She guides me through the trenches. She gets me out of every mess. She's my Bible. She's my buddy. She's my personal GPS. Well, she leads me on the journey. She leads me to the goal. She's always on the money. Never leaves me in the cold. Every time I listen, I wind up being truly blessed. She's my Bible, she's my buddy, she's my personal GPS. I'm at the fork in the road, I gotta make a choice. So much going on, I don't heed her voice, so I make a wrong turn. I'm feeling lost and afraid. Then I hear my angel calling, recalculate. Well, I gotta pay attention to powerful stuff. I've got. 
gotta turn it on And I've gotta turn it up Cause every time I do it You know I'm guaranteed success She ain't my Bible, she ain't my buddy She ain't my personal GPS This is where I'd ask you to play Jack But you can't so I guess I will question to get in touch with it. Hey Jack, I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Hello. Hello. What's Jack saying? Well, I'd love to hear another song from Jack. I don't know if we'll have time to go around again, but... No, that's fine with me. I mean, uh, I've, I've uh, in, enjoyed... Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this interview at all, Jack. I have had a great time. It's just great to get to visit with you guys. I know. I can't see anybody else like you can in Zoom, so I'm I just know. assuming it's just the three of us, you know. I know. We're just publicly hanging out. Yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what we do. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, it's been an, an adventure. We <laughs> yeah, we, we've chosen this. We brought this upon ourselves. <laughs> we have. Well, we didn't bring the COVID, but... Uh, no, but I mean the, the public no, life, public, the, the public COVID. hanging out in public on stage. No, that's true. Which, is, I mean, it really is interesting. I mean, speaking of choices, because, uh, you know, I've got a friend, a guy named W. Mitchell. He's a wonderful mm -hmm. speaker. And uh, this guy was actually burned head to toe twice in his life. Twice. Holy cow. An, an airplane accident and something else. That's and he's a, he's a phenomenal fair. speaker. He's a motivational speaker. And his whole thing is uh, all about, you know, it's not what happens to you. It's what you do about it. Hmm. And I just heard another quote of his. He said, you know, before I had my accident, I used to be able to do 10,000 things. He said, now I can do 9,000 things. <laughs> Which is really, really pretty cool way to look at it. Yeah, what's the statute of limitations here? <laughs> yeah. yeah. There isn't one. Right. No, there isn't one. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we did definitely create our own destiny. And yeah, that's what COVID's doing. It's making us, you know, do, do this stuff. Yeah, it's been fun putting this together. To and I've definitely had to learn many things with uh, the technology. And thank you all for bearing with me on that. And I think we're getting there. Bit yeah. by bit. Yeah, bit and by uh, bit. I just want to mention, uh, you, you know our next guest well, Jack. Um, we're going to have Vance Gilbert in two weeks. And um, just want to Oh, you guys are in for a ride. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're, it's going to be a treat. Uh, if you we, all we, don't we know Vance. Vance Gilbert, you must be sure to be here. So we are taking next week off. Um, next Wednesday, we are not going to have a show. It's at the same time as the vice presidential debate, and we thought we would just sit this one out and regroup and uh, set up our lineup for the next month and a half or so. So we're going to have a full month or more of shows to let you guys know about pretty soon. But the next one to mark your calendars for is October 14th, and it's going to be the amazing Vance Gilbert who has a very funny quote about Jack Williams on Jack's website. <laughs> it's a small world. 
And I was like, that's a perfect Vance Gilbert quote because he wrote one about me and the whole thing about his quotes about artists that he respects <clears throat> is like, does that mean what I think it means or does it mean something? I don't, I'm not sure what that means, but it seems really deep and it must mean that they're really good, but I can't quite figure it out. Sounds like a Neil Young song. <laughs> Seems like That's the way I feel about everything Vince says. There's, there's <laughs> nobody like him. He's uh, he's going to be great. So. Yeah. yeah, just for our <laughs> listeners, I mean, we've got some other guests coming up. Uh, at some point, Eliza Gilkison has agreed uh, to do it, oh, uh, as, as has uh, Ellis Paul. Um, Chris Smither. Ma Chris Smither, uh, Maria Muldaur, uh Scarlett oh. Rivera. We're so excited about uh, all and, these. And even, believe it or not, uh, Willis Allen Ramsey at some point. He's... Uh, <laughs> He's still making that album he's been making for the last 40 years. but No, it's already he, finished. It, it, it just about, I've yeah. heard it. Oh, it, it's great. I mean, I've heard it in different stages, but... Uh, no, I've heard the finished thing. Oh, my gosh. Really? Jack, yeah. I have he become... Won't, he's not going to release it. I have become such a huge no. fan of... Freebo has this... We probably shouldn't even say. Well, it has a, like a, a bootleg no, tape. Well, no, it's, well, oh, it's a Kerrville live too. recording. Got a, a, what he gave me so I could learn his tune, I'm but also with it. live at Kerrville so where I play good. with him. It's, it's, he's wonderful. Yeah. He's so unique. His, his album, and I, I met him about a year after he came out with that album around 1971 or two. Right. And we became friends. We sat up and picked all night for two nights, and we played Ray Charles and band songs and and uh, got to be friends. And... Uh, I get began to realize that this fellow's never going to put another album out. You you knew it back then? No, it started to show up around 75 when he said, I've got that album just about done. And then he said it every year thereafter. Uh-huh. And uh, uh, he's so but, good. You know, he's God, I wish he would. It's put so it out. it's so wonderful. I still play, you know. Spider John is my name, friends. In between phrases, show him. I can play any song on that album. Oh, uh -huh. so good. He wrote one of the greatest songs about Woody Guthrie mm. ever written. Which one? Traveling across the country, playing on the circuit line. Sometimes I think about a man who was here before my time. Named for the 28th president with a Guthrie tied to the end. Born in Oakey Must Shoes with the Dust Bowl Blues. Friend of the working man. Just a boy. Oh man, Willis Allen Ramsey. Yeah, can, can he's about as good any, as it gets. Can you do any any Willis vocal licks? <laughs> well, I probably Alice could because I imitated him. Oh my yeah. God, I've been imitating him in the car, <laughs> been trying he, to get he, it right. He, he's got a new a song, a new song, a song in the, on the quote new Mr. album. Mr. Lemon. What's that? You know that one? He doesn't know yeah, that give one. No, 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 Just no. A little no, bit. no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'd like to hear Jack play a song. Okay, That's what I, like I want to hear. hear. That too. I want, I want you to take us out, Jack. Let's, and we'll, we'll come okay, back on to say goodbye. But, but before Jack takes us what? out, we want to remind you people. We, oh. we just uh, a couple things. Uh, <laughs> if, if you haven't contributed, thrown in that five bucks, we'd really appreciate it. Again, if you like what you've heard, uh, help us along the road so we can continue doing this. Uh, we, we really appreciate it. <laughs> And we want to thank uh, Norman's Rare Guitars uh, for uh, ha having us on the uh, on their wonderful uh, YouTube channel. Yes. And uh, Norm has been a great supporter of us. We want to thank Jen, you know, who's kind of doing some switching back there and helping us out a lot. We really appreciate Jen. And we want to thank uh, uh, Kevin and Laurie from Rock Cellar Magazine and remind you guys if you uh, want to... Uh, subscribe to that. It's at rockcellarmagazine.com Magazine. and it's com. free. It's free and like I say, some really cool articles in it and, and news of the day as well. So uh, you can't beat it. And uh, Again, there's no catches. Uh, anything else? Yeah, well, we're so grateful to Fishman oh, yeah. for giving us this amp that you can't see, but it's uh, the Loudbox Mini and it's a rechargeable amp and it sounds amazing with Freebo's bass. So thank you, Fishman and also Audio Technica. They have sent us some really nice microphones, so we're grateful to all those wonderful folks. You can find us every Wednesday, except for next except Wednesday. For next Wednesday. <laughs> every other Wednesday. I mean, not every other Wednesday. Every Wednesday besides next Wednesday. 8 o'clock Eastern, 5 o'clock Pacific. Live at 5 Pacific, right here on Facebook and YouTube. And here is Jack Williams. Thank what? you for that lovely background music. I'll be seeing you. In Apple Blossom time?
No, that was uh, I'll be seeing you. All the old familiar places. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. But I'm gonna, I want to play one that's a little bit off the wall here. It's a song that's about 30-something years old of mine. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And um, I recorded it on an album that I forgot that I made in 1990. I really did. I uh, forgot about the album. But it's a song. <laughs> it's possible, you know. Judy and I were going through a box at Kerrville when we moved there, and I found it. I said, hey, here's an album. It's complete. Ten songs, and I'd forgotten that I'd recorded it. And I, so this is one song on there, and it's kind of a love song for rock and roll. I always felt like, you know, the... Dobie Gray, Drift Away. Yeah. It's a love song to rock and roll. Huh. It's kind of a love song, and I always thought, you know, I want to write my own love song to rock and roll, but mine's going to sound more like old rock and roll. And since you and I are both old, old rockers... We are. Dip back as far as 50s. Um, this is the song that uh, is going to be on the new album, even though it's a very old song. Cool. And uh, just hold on to your hats. It's a little bit more than your usual folky nonsense. <laughs> Way back in 59, graduation time. My shoes were superb, my hair was immaculate. I had the perfect date. She said, we cannot wait. She said, if you be cool, I might let you be the first to tackle it. And my new chrome pipes, and my racing stripes. My 57 Chevy was the creme of the creme de la creme. And in a school that small, no competition at all. And when it came to the hop, without a doubt, you were the queen of the gym. Oh, chain me, chain me to the backbeat. Chain me down, let the good times roll. And every now and then, my feet will fly again. To the beat of that whole solid gold rock and roll. We had the beat from the back. There was a grumble in Strat. <laughs> we knew we were part of something too big to deny. And as I stood watching all night long, and you and I danced to every song, we sang all the words to every star in the sky. Oh, chain me, chain me to the backbeat, chain me down, let the good times roll. And every now and then, my feet will fly again to the beat of that old solid gold rock and roll. To the back seat, chain me down, let the good times roll. And every now and then, my feet will fly again to the beat of that old solid gold rock and roll. Way back in '59, graduation time. My shoes were superb, my hair was immaculate. I had the perfect day, while her teeth were straight. She said, if you be cool, I will let you be the first to tackle it. Oh, chain me, chain me to the back seat. Chain me down, let the good times roll. And every now and then, my feet will fly again. To the beat of that old solid gold rock and roll Yeah, and every now and then My feet will fly again To the beat of that old solid gold rock and roll
couldn't help myself. Oh, man. Oh, that's killer, That man. is not the usual folky nonsense. That is... Well, you know... That was no well, but great. you're not you're not the usual folky Jack. No. You're in the folk <laughs> world, but man, you're coming from all these different places. Yeah. Well, the folk world is, is a is a very nice place to be with a lot of nice people. It is, and I'm glad that most of them are not the folk police. That they will allow for some <laughs> variation and and a yes. deviation from the route from here to there. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Hey, I mean, again, I relate to you so much because, uh, you know. We both have this varied musical background, and 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 you get to bring it into this world, you know. And it, it was really interesting working with Alice when I first met Alice, what three, three and a half year, whatever it was. And, and Alice was very much a folky, and uh, at one point would, and, and I mean, still is, and has a beautiful voice, but recovering. Uh, but at, at one point, I heard her <laughs> just kind of singing some bluesy stuff, and I said, what, "What what are you doing?" And she said, "Oh, it's just an old muddy water song." I said, you like Muddy Waters? I love Muddy Waters. You know? I said, really? And who else? Taj Mahal. And, you name and so we've been just exploring more and more of these other sides because, you know, we're, 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 we're not... We're all hybrids. Yeah, we're all hybrids. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just yeah. music. And the American songbook is, is so beautiful and varied. And there are so many styles that came from... Yeah. I mean, the melting pot we have as a people is exactly true with the music. You know, and this is kind of where it all hybrided. As, uh, <laughs> no words, just made oh. it up. But, but, hybrided. But, but hybrided, yeah. Kind hybrided. Of mig it migrated and hybrided all into this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, kind of like New Orleans. <laughs> but before we go, I, I wanted to thank uh, Alert the Globe also for uh, helping yeah. us broadcast this. Yeah. It's just another platform that uh, has been very good to us. And, and thank you, Laurie, for reminding me. Yeah. And appreciate it, Ron. And we, we look forward to doing more work, yeah. more work with them. So between Alert the Globe and Facebook Live and, 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 YouTube, and YouTube, you can find us everywhere. Yeah. And Jack Williams, thank you for being thank our you. guest this week. I had a great time. Thanks for having me. It's oh, absolutely, Jack. Our and pleasure. We look forward to seeing you down the line. And what's it? Uh, what the website is? Jack Williams. Jack Williams Music dot com. Also, and, go and, to patre patreon.com. Oh, uh, yeah. You need some, need some yep. patrons. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Patreon is very cool. And, um, I, you know, I'd love for you to follow Freebo here on his Facebook page. And there's my info, too. And thank you, Norms. Thanks, everybody. Are, are you uh, doing any online things coming up that you might want to uh, promo oh, yeah. here, Jack? Yes, I don't have that information in front of me, but um, you can find it out at jackwilliamsmusic.com. Every time I'm going to do Williams something, I post it there. That's, That's all I can do. Yeah. Um, well, so I and, do have and, a, and, and Facebook, yeah. But, yes. But I'm sure you I, made some new fans tonight, people who'd never oh, yeah. heard of you, I hope so. you before. So. I I'm so. sorry I couldn't see you out there, but I could hear you breathing. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they were there. Yes. They were there. All right. Bye, Jack. Thank you. See, Bye, love, everybody. Love, love to Judy. Thank you for your help, Judy. Yeah, thanks, Judy. Love to you both. Love to you.